Hey everyone, and welcome back to this very special episode of Around the Farm, Farm Progress Show Edition. Y'all saw all the cool ag stations and more than a few hijinks that I got thrown into during the last part, and there's more of that to come for this. Stick around to the end, and we'll finally catch up with Matt Youngman for a great retrospective of how he thought this year's show went. And now back to Around the Farm, Farm Progress Show. Now that I'm uh, completely full of that absolutely wonderful ribeye, we're gonna run up here to this next pin, which is going to be Kloss. So let's go check out uh, check out what they have uh, up at their tent. So here we go. So I am standing here in the Kloss booth at Farm Progress Show 2022. Greg, how about you introduce yourself? Yeah, so I'm Greg Frenzel, product manager here at Kloss. So thank you for stopping by here today, Clint. Excited to share some information about our new tractor. Absolutely. I mean, talking about this, tell me about this beast here, man. This is like a front wheel assist with a wicked track system on it. Yeah, so we're pretty excited about it here. Um, it's an addition to our Axion 900 series. So we've had that five different models in the wheel version since 2019. Now we're adding to that. We got two new models, the 930 and the 960. 930 has got 350 horsepower. The 960 has 440 horsepower. And then it's got our new, our uh, Terror Track system that has been newly updated to be able to fit a tractor application versus in the past because we've had them for 25 plus years in the combines choppers and things like that so now instead of making it a carrying load capacity track it's made for pulling uh putting the power to the ground while reducing compaction there yeah i mean if i'm not totally mistaken y'all were like pretty much the first to the whole track side of things i mean back in the day putting tracks on a combine i'm talking like way back in the day. That's correct, yeah. So, and now we brought that track system with all the updates to over the 25 plus years now into this tractor. So we're really excited about it. Fully suspended track, so it'll pivot about the center. Um, and it's also hydraulically suspended. So very nice, smooth ride across the machine. Oh, uh, that is awesome. How about, uh, what kind of technology you got in this thing? Yeah, so as far as technology, if we're talking about the steering systems, it's very open platform, so Ag Leader, Tremble, Climate View, you know, we're open to different manufacturers. So we want to fit the farm with that. Um, and it really pairs well with the Climate Field View system. We have a lot of guys using that uh, to be able to collect data on that. That is awesome, man. Well, I know uh, you're busy at this show. Thank you for taking a little bit of time. This thing is absolutely awesome. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll see you around the farm, man. Yep. Thank you, Clint. Appreciate Thank you. it. All right, still at the Kloss tent here, and I'm standing with Mr. Jeff Gray. How's it been, man? It's going great, going great. It's been a great two days here at the farm show. We've been busy from open till close, and uh, so great to see everybody out here. It's, uh, it's, it's really been a great show. Well, weather's been great, so it's nice. Oh, I know. Usually it's like either pouring down rain or 105 degrees, so uh, this is absolutely beautiful. Uh, wh what do you do at Kloss? I am responsible for product performance for the central region, so my team and I, we make sure these combines and tractors and forage harvesters and all of our baler hay tools perform to meet the expectations of the customers. That's awesome. Well, speaking of machines here, this thing behind us, this thing looks awesome. Tell us a little bit about this. This is actually the newest combine to the Kloss portfolio. So this is called the Treon 740, and it's a little bit different from the Lexion. The Lexion uh, combine is uh, has got two dual, what we call dual rotor separation, yep. or dual separation rotors. This has a single rotor. So those that are familiar with the Lexion 740, uh, this has their th that threshing system inside. So that APS threshing, the same as the Lexion 740, but instead of two rotors, it's got one rotor. And the reason we did that is we wanted to make a little bit more economical machine. We wanted to make a machine that, uh, that was best fit for those, those smaller farms, those 1,500 to 2,500 acre farms. You can even go 3,000 or so. It's, it's, what, it's whatever your preference is. But we wanted one that would fit economically into that, into that, into that uh, smaller farm. Uh, still today, class six and seven combines are the number one selling combines. Uh, uh, in North America, so we wanted to be able to offer 
uh, an additional, another option for that. So we still have the Lexion 7500 Class 7, yep. uh, but then we have this one that's a little bit, uh, a little bit simpler than the Lexion. What I always, I always refer to the Lexion as the maximizer. Uh, that is the combine that if you really want to push the the productivity limits, the acres per hour, the bushels per hour, that's what a Lexion's for. That's yep. a, it's an awesome machine when it gets going in the field. That's the machine you use when you really want to finish harvest faster and in a more timely fashion. But this one is for those folks that uh, that really don't have the logistics to, to push those capacity limits. They just want to they just want to maintain their their ordinary level of productivity. They just want to do it better, more efficiently, and that's what this combine comes in as. That is awesome, and I have to say, I got to say one thing here. Mm -hmm. I love the color scheme. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's great. As we expanded our product line, we're now offering high horsepower row crop tractors in both wheeled and tracks. Uh, we've expanded our combine line, so it's time to bring everything under the same color. I love it. Love it. Well, Jeff, it's always a pleasure to talk to you here, and uh, hope you have uh, a great rest of the uh, Farm Progress Show here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Klaus is always at the forefront of ag equipment, and I can't thank Greg and Jeff enough for showing me how they're working to make their machines leaner, meaner, and more efficient for all the farmers to use. Great job, guys. All right, we just stopped at Klaus and got to see those awesome tractors and combine. Now, let's see what's next. Let's go to this pen over here, pop this open, and let's see what this is. It is the world's largest corn head. Yeah, let's go find this. That'll be fun. We'll see you at the world's largest cornhead. Hey, so I have found the world's largest corn head here at Gearinghoff's lot. 60 foot long. This thing is absolutely massive. So it is just so much fun walking around this show and just seeing all these cool things. So, all right, off to the next one. Man, that world's largest corn head was absolutely awesome. Just a massive beast. Let's see what, uh, what pin we got next over here. We're gonna go check out Farm Next. So, all right. Off, uh, off that way we go. So, Phil, first I gotta say, just thank you for taking some time uh, yeah, to sit here and my talk pleasure. to us. We're excited to have you at a Pivot Bow booth. Yeah, how about you give a little introduction? So, I'm Phil Stanup. I'm the Vice President of Commercial Strategy, and under that is uh, Pivot Bow's marketing, which is oh. where my love is. <laughs> and so, coming to something like this is always a lot of fun for me. Well, that is awesome. I got to say, looking around your tent between like the amazing farm truck that you have over there, all of these cool tent setups, beautiful setup here. Thank you. Yeah, the farm truck's been a very exciting project. It's driven a ton of attention. It's the truck that everybody would love to have, but nobody would pay for it. <laughs> well, myself included, because yeah. I'd love to have that. But, yeah. uh, but hey, one of the things I wanted to talk to you that uh, was just incredibly interesting to me was this concept of Farm Next and the tent that you kind of have behind your tent here. Right. Well, our founder, Carson Teme, loves ag tech and, and he's out on the West Coast, and I think a lot of people there don't realize all of the amazing innovations happening in agriculture. And so he likes to spotlight other ag tech startups. So the idea of this show was to sort through some of the top early stage ag tech startups and to be able to focus on them, create a video, and then we actually had a TV program that's on RFD TV that features Max Armstrong, who everyone in farming knows. And it's sort of like a Shark Tank light thing where they get a chance to tell their story, but then we have an investor, we have Karsten, and we have a farmer, and they get a chance to sort of put their ideas to the test. Oh, that is so cool. You know, I mean, just with all of the neat startups that are out there, I mean, all this amazing technology. I know you were talking about uh, one guy that created an invisible fence for cattle, right? Uh, yeah. It's just so fun to be able to see people's ideas get brought to life. And the best ideas are the ones that come from somebody's personal experience. They have a pain point or something that's difficult to do. And this young kid was moving fence and fixing fence and putting up fence in, in Western Nebraska with his father. And it's like, there's gotta be a better way. And they were joking about, wouldn't it be great if there was invisible fence for cows? He went off to engineering college and that never lost his mind. And now he's figured it out. So it's a cool story. 
Hey, it's what my dad says on our farm, which is work smarter, not harder, right? Yeah. And uh, that's, a, that's a true testament to that, yeah. uh, absolutely. Uh, how about you give us just a quick rundown on what Pi uh, Pivot Bio does? Yeah, Pivot Bio makes, uh, we work with naturally occurring microbes that fix nat atmospheric nitrogen and turn it into ammonia. And what we do is we find the most robust strains of microbes that do that, and we, we gene edit them so they're highly efficient at that. And the very cool part of that is they actually uh, affix to the roots. They stick to those roots all season long, and they grow and colonize. And wow. all 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all through the growing season, they're giving the corn plant or wheat plant uh, ammonia that they need to, to grow. And it can be hot, it can rain, all the things that affect synthetic nitrogen don't affect that, those microbes. So it's a very predictable form of nitrogen. Well, what I love about that, Phil, is uh, we, I, I farm with my father, right? And what's soil made out of, right? I mean, there's a pile of nitrogen that's sitting in there. We just got to make it accessible to the plant. Yeah. And there's very few things that people buy that you know when you purchase it, like on your farm, you know a big percentage of the synthetic you buy is either going to be lost to the environment or it's just not going to be in, in proximity to the roots and it's not going to be taken up and used. And so that's where we just have this nitrogen that 40 pounds of nitrogen is 40 pounds of nitrogen. That's awesome. Well, Phil, I know that uh, that you're busy here. You guys have a, a pretty fun grower event that uh, yeah. that's happening right here. So uh, I'll let you get back to it. And I just want right. to say uh, thanks for uh, having right. a chat well, with you, me here. Clint. It was very nice to meet you. And thanks for having me on your podcast. All right. Have a good All one. Right. You too. It's great to see the progress highlighted at the Farm Progress Show. I mean, it's in the name, right? I couldn't have enjoyed my time more with Phil and his booth and appreciating the spotlight that Pivot Bio places on the innovation of ag tech startups through their Farm Next tent and on all the environmental sustainability in general. Great job. So I am here at the Varied Industries tent and it's incredibly exciting. They actually have asphalt in this. It used to be wood chips. This is a huge upgrade for this. So uh, it'll be uh, exciting. Let's just go take a quick uh, lap around this and uh, see how it looks. So here we go. I am at the Buried Industries tent with Austin. Austin, tell us a little bit about yourself here. Uh, regional sales manager for O'Reilly Auto Parts. Um, come out here every couple of years to kind of represent the ag industry and promote some of our fleet products and get out here and kind of see what's going on in the world of ag. Well, one of the big updates here for uh, Farm Progress 22 was the Varied Industry tent. I'm not standing on wood chips, man. No, negative. It's been a huge upgrade, to be honest. It's a heck of a lot better on the allergies, that's for sure. <laughs> Definitely. Have you seen that having an impact on even the farmers walking through here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially having kind of a little rainy, dreary first day, um, it makes it a heck of a lot easier to clean up um, as far as the traffic coming through. Flows a lot nicer, easier, not everybody tripping around. Loading in, loading out, certainly a lot easier as well. I could imagine, man. Well, hey, what else do we need to know about uh, about O'Reilly Auto Parts? Come and see us at any local store you got. We're uh, nationwide. Got everything to service your fleet and ag needs. And uh, yeah, absolutely. Come and see us. First call. All right, Austin, thanks for taking some time. We'll see you later. Thank you. So it's been awesome sitting here, uh, running around Farm Progress Show 2022, checking out all the latest and greatest technology. But sometimes you just gotta get back to, to where it's at. And that's uh, with this old uh, hit and miss stove engine behind me that's running, making us some homemade ice cream. So I'm gonna go jump in line, grab some ice cream, and we'll see y'all around the farm. Joining me now is the man himself, Matt Youngman, the National Events Manager at Farm Progress Show. Matt, thanks for joining us here again on Around the Farm. Glad to be with you. Seems like every time I'm with you, I'm in the cab of a truck because some other thing is going on around me. But that's it's we can make it work from anywhere. I'm glad to be with you. Hey, that's that's the joy of all this cool technology, right? We just get to have uh, meetings and talk to people all across the world at any given time at this point. 
Yep, that's exactly right. So here from the cab of the truck again, we'll uh, we'll talk about the Farm Progress Show. <laughs> there we go. Well, hey, I, I tell you what, I spent uh, the entire week up at uh, up at Boone there and had an absolute ball. First off, I just want to say thank you for dropping all the pins to uh, sending us around all the cool stuff to uh, to go see. That was kind of a, I did that on Sunday before the show opened on Tuesday, and it was kind of a nice little break just to get out of the office. And I, I tell people that I have never actually seen a Farm Progress show in person since I took this job, but it was my little chance to go around and say, oh, that's going to be cool. That's going to be cool. And and kind of hit drop a few pins here and there just so that you didn't miss anything that, that I thought was neat anyway. Well, I tell you what, one of the other things that I thought was absolutely amazing was the weather this year. I don't know if we've ever had that nice of weather for a Farm Progress show. Yeah, it, it, it is amazing, Clint. It's amazing how good I am at my job when Mother Nature gives us 75 <laughs> degrees and sunny. And it's amazing how bad I am at my job when it's raining sideways. So, it, it you know, I get in trouble when the weather goes bad. So I might as well take a little bit of the credit when when it goes good. But, yeah, that's, uh, you know, that's the that's the big unknown that you ha- never know about going into it, that you kind of that's the thing you lose sleep over that you can't control. But it, it sure turned out perfect, you know. Mother Nature hurt us a little bit in the spring. We weren't able to get in the field as early as we wanted to to get those field demo crops planted. Uh, but then on the other end, she treated us real well for the three days of the event. So that that all worked out really, really well. Well, I, I thought it was an absolute beautiful setup there. Uh, we had an absolute uh, ball running around, talking to everybody, uh, and just having some great conversations with all the all the farmers there, all the exhibitors there. I mean, everybody just seemed uh, just to really enjoy that entire show. Last year in 2021 in Decatur, we had almost no international traffic, as you would expect. Really thrilled to see South America come back. We didn't we we didn't have great expectations for international traffic and it it really blew us away you know we didn't get as much southeast asia and as much europe as we might get next year in decatur but it, you know from south america there were lots of groups coming in which was real nice to see come back yes i i, I seen that that uh, that is that is great to get that kind of traffic well i got to ask with all the cool stuff that's going on at that show what was your what was your favorite part I think that the, you know, I've got lots of favorites. I loved, I loved seeing that 24 row corn head, but probably my favorite was the Lee Bryce concert on Wednesday night. By the time we get to Wednesday night, whatever, you know, the show is pretty much done. There's not a lot of stuff that you're going to fix for the last day of the show. So you've gotten through the, the rough spots on Tuesday and we had beautiful weather and a huge crowd on Wednesday. And then by the time you get to Wednesday, afternoon Wednesday evening things are kind of chilled out and I know you and I talked there at the concert it was a beautiful night and it was just it was just a wonderful event that that concert was uh, was beautiful again you couldn't ask for any better weather right and uh, just seeing yeah. everybody there enjoying themselves uh, just a, a, a great view there so I, I tell you what my favorite part I would have to go and and when I was walking around a lot of the the, the, the bear crop science booths, uh, I worked uh, the DeKalb Asgrove booth uh, quite a bit, and uh, I think my favorite part was just getting back to talking to folks again. You know, just talking to a lot of the farmers. I got to talk to farmers from all over the Midwest, uh, and it was just great to to really just gather some of that insight and uh, and just have some of those discussions again. I think that's always just uh, always fun to, to, like I said, just be able to talk to farmers all over the place. Yeah, to be able to shake hands and to literally kick tires and and be in person with people, it was it was really nice to get back to it. You know, we're all really good at talking into screens like we're doing right now, but to to actually be together and shake hands and have good conversations and you know, there's nothing like standing next to a piece of equipment or standing next to an expert and asking the questions that that organically come as you get into a conversation when you're talking about product or technology um you know just nothing better than that and and you know shows the strengths of of live events in person uh, it was it was just wonderful and and you know i've got to compliment amy from your team that we talked about the last time we were together all those bear crop sciences exhibits looked tremendous you know there is a ton of work that goes on in the background to make that look as good as what you saw and and it's 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 just cool to be part 
of working with with an organization that 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 puts so much effort into it. It, it, it it's it's the things like that that elevate the show. We are we are definitely blessed to uh, to have a good uh, good events team there, and uh, I know Amy and team put a ton of work into that, and it looked absolutely spectacular. You know, one of one of the other things, Matt, that I had to laugh at. Uh, I don't usually get to walk around and and go do some of the riding drives, you know. And uh, one of the neat things that you guys had uh, a spot out there where one of the companies uh, had uh, three skid loaders, and uh, you know, one on tracks, one on wheels, one on I think they were calling them twheels, right? Twheels. And uh, and it was really neat to actually go out there and. I, I drove all three, and I'm like, man, you know, you just have such a such a fun event there to actually be able to go drive some of this equipment that you may not get to drive on a on a day to day basis. Yeah, and and you know, they may not bring you out three to sample at your farm, so you get to go and experience <laughs> that right there. And you know, some of the cool stuff going on out there was hands off with the autonomy. You know, we had all those. Raven had all those autonomous machines running out there. That was a pretty cool thing to witness. And, you know, sprayers and, and you know, all kinds of different machines out there, pickup trucks and everything else that you'd want to run. The the autonomous side is just so exciting, you know. And uh, you mentioned, you know, and I've seen that spreader that was out there. You start seeing a lot of the the different uh, drone applicators that are that are out there uh, running. I mean, the the autonomous piece is just incredibly exciting. You know, speaking of uh, of cool things, last time we talked, I asked you what you know the the best piece of swag that uh, that you'd got from a Farm Progress show. I got asked the same thing. So after this show, what was uh, what was the best uh, the best piece of swag that you got? So you know, you can default to a five gallon bucket pretty quick. I, I was sent on a mission to come home with five gallon buckets and decalb sweatshirts. But you know, the the best piece of swag that I came well, I came home with two really exciting pieces of swag. Uh, the folks the folks in the media tent one of the one of the parting gifts for the media was a, a little gift bag that had some um, AirPods. So that oh, was nice. that was a pretty cool yeah that was a pretty cool piece of swag. But then um, the the Ames, Des Moines, and Boone CDBs got together and gave us all all the host, the show team little thank you gifts for bringing the event to Central Iowa. And so there was a really nice bottle of bourbon in one of those. So that was probably my <laughs> my favorite party or you know piece of swag. Not everybody's going to get one. So for for the general public, we'll default to the five gallon bucket. But those are the two cool things that came home in my truck. It's it's hard to beat a good bottle of bourbon there. So you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talked about the five gallon buckets. It was uh, it was funny when we were running around the show looking at all those pins that you dropped. Uh, I passed a couple a uh, couple FFA kids, and I think the one had a stack of five gallon buckets that was you know starting to become taller than he was at that point in time. So yep. uh, it was fun to see everybody running around. I remember back when I was a kid going to Farm Progress shows. Uh, it was uh, yardsticks, right? And yep. Uh, yep. and now it's five gallon buckets. So, so the the Fellowship of Christian Farmers gives away those walking sticks, those big heavy walking yep. sticks. Yep. So at, at Husker Harvest Days, I saw two FFA kids, and they had like six five gallon buckets with one of those walking sticks stuck through all the handles, and they were walking side <laughs> by side, and they had these six five gallon buckets full of stuff walking through the show. It was it, it, it took up a lot of room on the street, but it was kind of fun to watch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a fun scavenger hunt at that point in time, yep. right? So, yep. so I got to ask too. I mean, just with all the all the changes that you went through this, uh, you know, over the last few years, what was the one thing that that really surprised you about uh, about this year's Farm Progress show? So I went into Tuesday with some apprehension because we hadn't had a show in Boone since 2018. And you couple that with the fact that we had a new roadway along the west side of the grounds between us and the, the cow plant there. It, it, had a, it added a third lane of traffic that we could use, but it also changed our entry points. And, you know, the, the answer to your question is I was shocked at how well that machine, and if you think about how big of a machine that is that it takes to run the traffic, park the cars, do the admission. You know, we we had big crowds. So the electrical system, the internet system, all of those things were being maxed out really fast on Tuesday morning. And everything went almost flawlessly. There's always some small things in the background. Uh, some of that has to do with Mother Nature agreeing with us. We, we were able to use every square inch of that parking lot. And that's good because we filled that big north parking lot on yep. Wednesday. But I was shocked 
that after not having a show there since 2018, how well everything fired back up. And so it, but it all fired off really well and, and worked really smoothly. I, I tell you what, you know, you mentioned the traffic piece on that, Matt, and I was thoroughly impressed uh, with with just the flow of traffic. Uh, every morning that I drove in, I thought everything uh, just went incredibly smooth. Uh, and hats off to uh, to all the law enforcement out there as well that's uh, that's helping uh, helping drive that. I mean, they were out there first thing in the morning, and uh, I'm sure they're out there late at night. And uh, and it was uh, just incredibly awesome to see all of that, uh, you know, really come together and just how smooth it was getting in and out of the show. We get a ton of support from the Iowa State Patrol and the DOT. And, you know, if you can imagine when we have a traffic and safety meeting, there's there's 60 people around a giant table working to make sure that that not only the traffic flows smoothly and everything goes right there, but then you also have to take into account EMS and fire coverage and and all, all of those kind of life safety things. And that team performed flawlessly again and and have it, not having done it since 18 I was really expecting that we were going to have some bumps to overcome and and between getting through that Tuesday morning without any big big hiccups and really not having to worry about the weather it was I came home a lot more rested than maybe I normally would after a farm progress show <laughs> Uh, well, you know, the, the, the funny thing is, Matt, is I came home with a lot more unused clothes because I, you know, when I go to farm progress show, I always pack, you know, mud boots and an extra pair of, you know, pants and shirt. Cause you, uh, again, that weather piece, you just never know, but man, uh, again, I, I, I couldn't ask for a better, uh, a better, better weather event there. So, um, as far as, you know, you talked about not doing this since 2018 and since then you've, you've done a lot of development as well. I mean, uh, I look Looked at that uh, at your VIT tent. Such an awesome, uh, awesome view in there. As you look at the uh, all the uh, asphalt that got put in there. I mean, kind of talk through how you feel that all of those improvements and investments uh, into the show site really kind of changed uh, how this show ended up uh, going off this year. I I can go back to 2006, and uh, there was a, a gal, a predecessor of Amy's at at that time. It was Monsanto, who put in put in a plot there and and really elevated the way that the exhibitors put together their exhibits and it made everybody else follow along and and the the work going into the exhibits since 2006 has just continued to escalate and the kind of show that that these exhibitors are putting on and we have to follow suit as the show i mean we're the we've got to follow with the infrastructure and, and those kind of things to make the show better whether it's traffic or like you mentioned that partnership with iowa soybean to get recycled asphalt put down under the varied industries tent which is an acre of tent so that's an acre of asphalt underneath it that really raised the bar for those exhibitors in there. It made it so much more comfortable. And, you know, those are the kind of investments and, and those are the kinds of partnerships that we try to go out and find and foster and work work with our exhibitor, work with our exhibitor base to to help improve the event. And I, you know, hats off to Iowa Soybean, hats off to Iowa State. Iowa State brought that to us as an idea. And then, you know, we went to Iowa Soybean and it, it just kind of fell together really, really well. And you know, the funny thing about that is that you and I are standing there talking on Wednesday and celebrating and enjoying a great farm progress show. But then by about Thursday or Friday, the day after or the day after that, now all of a sudden I've got a new bar to clear when we start talking about the next show. So it, it kind of, the, the success piles a whole bunch more pressure onto all of us to make the show better and better and better every time we have a good one like that. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's a lot of the thought process that uh, that we go into as well, right? It's like uh, you hear a lot of great feedback from from these amazing displays and and tent setups, and uh, and it's uh, it's similar for us, right? We get together as a team afterwards, and you kind of decompress, and it's like, okay, what what's the next step, right? Where where's yep. the where's the next excitement at? So no, I was just gonna say that that when you do that. Okay, that was great. High fives all the way around. Now we have to go beat it. How are we going to beat it next year? Yeah, so that that's what I was wanting to ask here. Uh, can you give us a little insight into what we can expect uh, from Decatur in uh, in 2023? So there's, you know, it's it's really early, but I really want to replicate that asphalt thing in the Varied Industries tent. We're working with Illinois Soybean to try to come up with a, a similar program there. Additionally, Illinois Soybean is going to put some ground inside the fence into production 
into a long-term plot there in cooperation with Richland Community College and and us and Illinois Soybean to to do cover crop and soil conservation and and you know water safety and 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 all those kind of not water safety I should say you know water conservation and so that'll be oh. a cool long-term project to to work with them on Decatur is also the soybean capital of the world. So we're doing some, we did some tests this year and honestly I haven't gotten the results on it yet, but down the road, I think it would be really cool to add soybean harvesting demonstrations back into the field demonstrations at the Farm Progress Show. So that's something oh. that, you know, that we can't, that's not something that we can step lightly into because we have to be sure that we can get a crop that's ready to harvest before we ask these companies to truck in more machines and more staff and more labor and depreciate another machine and spend money on fuel and extra people and everything else. So that's something that we're evaluating that we'd really like to bring to the table because I think it's it's fitting to have a soybean demonstration in Decatur, Illinois. Nowhere in the world is it more fitting than, than right there in the shadow of the ADM plant. Well, I tell you what, as the you know, as a soybean guy at uh, at the Calabas Grow, I mean, you're pulling on my heartstrings here, Matt. So <laughs> I, I, I I'd, I'd love to see some uh, some soybean demonstrations there. So uh, you know, you bring in those great big draper heads. I mean, the 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 sixty foot corn head was exciting, but they make some really big drapers out there as well. That's exactly right. Maybe you're my guy well, to help me figure out how to get Group Zero or Group One beans to to thrive in Decatur, Illinois. That's that's the big question. There we go. I think I think we can have a have a discussion there. So, well, I tell you what, Matt. I, I and this is just absolutely wonderful. I loved uh, attending the show this year again. Uh, I think it just went uh, went absolutely wonderful. I, what I didn't hear, I, I was hoping you were going to tell me for 2023, you're going to guarantee the same weather that we had this year. I, I didn't hear that. So, you know, I'll, I'll keep my fingers crossed, though. After 25 years of this thing, you just kind of figure out that Mother Nature is going to do whatever the heck she wants and you don't have a lot to do with it, but we can have good plans in place. Hey, absolutely. Well, Matt, thank you again for uh, for everything that you do there. Uh, Farm Progress Show is my absolute favorite show when we go out there, and I look forward to, to attending Decatur again uh, and uh, and look forward to, to, to maybe having, uh, having you on the show there uh, ahead of time so you can kind of give us some of those sneak peeks again. That'd be great. Would love to do it. I appreciate being on with you guys. All right. Well, hey, we'll see you. See you next time. Thanks, Matt. Thank you. A special thanks to Matt for taking time out of his busy schedule and joining us here today to go through his thoughts around Farm Progress Show 2022. I mean, it just keeps getting better and better every year. I also want to thank, uh, thank our listeners out there. If you enjoyed this podcast, be sure to hit that like button and share it with a friend or two as well. And Around the Farm is brought to you by Climate Field View. And don't miss any of our episodes. You can catch us wherever you get your podcast at. And until next time, we'll see you around the farm. <laughs>